And here's Data East Pinball CPU board number one. Um, this board has had some corrosion, which has partially been repaired, but it's not been done properly, as you can see, it's actually coming back. And um, this socket has all green pins in it. This one looks like it's been replaced. Got some damage on the other side as well. Yeah, don't like the look of that soldering. So, I'm going to remove those sockets and then neutralise the board. I think I might need to remove some of these components as well. Okay, so we've removed these sockets and the crystal and cleaned up the corrosion that was trapped underneath those. And I'm just going to give it another neutralisation rinse and then it's ready to start repairing. Data East board number one. Uh, we've replaced the corroded sockets, new CPU, new CPU socket, new RAM and new RAM socket. Um, put a different crystal in and replace some broken off test points. Um, and we're just uh, just doing a short circuit test before I power it up. So we've got 565 ohms, so that's okay. I'm um, just going to make sure there's nothing else wrong, stick the test ROM in and see what we get. Okay, so I powered up and I checked we got a valid reset signal, we got a valid clock. Um, the, the CPU is running to some extent, it's actually executing code, uh, but none of the PIA outputs are doing anything, so it's not running very well. So uh, on this board, which is uh, board number one, there's a couple of ICs that have been circled in permanent marker. I assume that's probably the previous owner indicating he thinks they're bad. Um, I've just removed this one from the circuit because it looks to be bad. It looks had some static outputs, uh, but this one seems to be okay. I can't see anything wrong with that one. So uh, basically, put it into my chip tester, and we'll do an auto search. And not found. That's indicating that that's actually bad, as it's not recognisable by its its logic pattern. So uh, let's try replacing that and see if we get any improvement. So I've replaced that LSO8, and the game's still not running. So um, it's been doing some probing with my logic probe, and it appears that there may be some static outputs on this IC here, which I think was at 245. Yeah, it's 245. Um, and also, I'm not sure if it's just a conflict on the day bus, but this, this PIA here might be bad, so I'm going to try this IC first, and then I'll try this PIA. Okay, so that's the 245 removed and put in the IC tester. It gives system error, so that's clearly faulty or shorted or something that's causing problems for this tester. So, uh, a new socket and a new chip there, and we're one step closer to fixing it, hopefully. And the 245 has been replaced with a new socket as well, and the game is still not running. So, I'm going to suspect this, unfortunately this now, because this is a 40 pin chip for me to these older, but it is in the corrosion zone, and it does look a little dodgy on the legs. So, there's a good chance that's faulty. So, as you can see, my suspicions were correct. That PIA is totally dead. Everything is high, all the inputs and outputs. So, that's not doing anything at all. And what it would have been doing when it was in the board is it would have been polluting the data bus by dragging everything else into a high state, therefore the game couldn't run. So hopefully, unless there's any other bad PIs, replacing this should actually get the game booting now. Okay, so we've replaced the 6821 PIA, uh, and the board is still not booting. Now, the data bus is looking a lot healthier when I probe it. It's basically pulsing fast as it should be, rather than... Uh, short bursts trying to pull the lines low, which is what it was doing before, and that one was that PIA was shorting out the uh, data bus. Um, another another probe around it, it might be there's actually another bad PIA, but I think all the rest of the logic chips are actually okay, so uh, hopefully we're not far off actually fixing this. Right, so no matter what I do with this board number one, I can't get it to actually run code. The uh, CPU is running as such, and it's not actually writing to any of these PIAs, so nothing's actually happening. Uh, so it's going to have to be one of these PIAs is putting some crap data on the data bus and causing problems. So I'm going to have to go through the painstaking removal process to remove them all and see which one it is that's actually bad. Okay, so this is the third PIA I've pulled from the board, and as we can see, we have a bad line. So that's a bad PIA. And would you believe it, this is the very last PIA I've removed from the board and absolutely everything is dead on it, all the data, so these, these dead uh, data lines here which are all stuck high, that would have been polluting the data bus and actually causing the problems that we're having with the board booting. So, uh, so that was an additional two PIAs that were found bad on that board, giving a total of three bad PIAs. 
So with the three bad PIAs replaced here, here and here, and the original three that will work okay put back in, the test sequence is now working correctly. The last thing to do is basically to probe pin 6 of the CPU to do a memory test. And then once that's done, this is ready for testing inside the game. And here we can see board number 1 installed in my Star Wars machine. And that's working fine. So I'm just going to do a bit of a play test through to make sure all switches and all solenoids are working correctly. And then that's, that's that one done. And my plunger coil is on fire. Excellent. Okay, so what's happened with my uh, launching coil is Q44 here has gone leaky and Q36 has also gone bad. So I'll have to replace those two and also check it hasn't gone further up the chain to the 7408 here or the 273 here or even the PIA here in the worst case. And I've removed this uh, 7408 here and there's a lot of corrosion under this chip so that's probably what was causing the problem with these transistors originally and that's caused them to leak. Right, so I've taken the uh, plunger mechanism apart and the coil is completely screwed. Look at that, it's all melting bulged. And if you can see inside that the uh, plastic's all sticking out inside. Uh, and that's measuring 0.3 ohms, so that's totally shorted. It's completely welded itself together. Um, so yeah, what was the annoying thing was, um, it was obviously working, you know, you could actually fire it and play a game, but it was obviously leaking current continuously, actually making it heat up. So, it's completely fried it. That's really annoying because they're about £12, those coils. That's not a cheap one. Uh, what is it? It's a 94, 94, sorry, 24,940. Uh, closest I've got in stock is a 24,900. I think that's physically the same size. Yeah. So, I can kind of use this just to test it out and make sure it works. But I need to get obviously the proper one because it'll be the proper strength. For the game. Uh, so I just need to put this coil in and reassemble it and then I can, uh, well I'm hoping I'll fix the board again. Well uh, there, obviously done those transistors and that drive chip there. Uh, well hopefully it doesn't fry a coil again. Okay so I've fitted a new coil, I just put the plunger in here. So if there's any leakage uh, causing a magnetic field I will be able to detect it because this should, you know, I've, this should be harder to move around. I'll drop it on the floor. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to give this a quick try. Okay, so I'm powering up the game, and let's check the coil. There's no resistance there at all, so that coil is not powered up. So that fix seems to have worked. Okay, and here's board number one, fully repaired and in the machine. Just doing a quick play test. Everything's working fine. Okay, that's a successful test.